Or, if you're saying, well, I'm going to follow my church and do everything my church says to do, and I'm going to be baptized, and I'm going to ha take Holy Communion, and I'm going to do all these things, is, there, is, there, is it bad to do good works? No, no, it's not bad to do good works. But that's not, not what gets you to heaven. You can't get into heaven that way. Mm -hmm. Because what it's like to God is, if I take this water, I've got a nice little water bottle here, some really great fresh spring water. Oh, mm. that is really good. Now, that's like our good works. Good works is like that pure water. Mm -hmm. Nothing wrong with the water. It's great. But if I took this water and I poured the same good water into a dirty, filthy glass that I had mm -hmm. sitting around in the cabinet dirt that had cobwebs, cobwebs and spi <laughs> spiders dead in it and yeah. dirt, mm -hmm. and I poured that water in it, if I gave that to you, Abby, would you drink that? No. 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 You'd be like, ah, uh, no, no, thanks, but no thanks. But, but the water's good water. It's the vessel. That's right, that vessel. That's what we're like to God. In God's eyes, we are, you know, we're not good. Okay, our good works are in a dirty vessel because we're sinners. And he says, I can't accept that. You can do all the good works in the world, but we can't clean up ourselves. Right. We can't clean up our sinful ways. We can't mm -hmm. stop sinning if we try. Try it. Challenge you. Try not to sin once in a day. No. Try not to have one bad thought. Okay? Even your thoughts. God sees your thoughts, knows them. Not to have one bad thought, not say one ba bad thing, not do one wrong thing. You can try as hard as you want, but you will never, never be able to do that. All it takes is one sin to separate us from God. Right. And every one of For us eternity. is guilty right, mm -hmm. of far more than that. Right. God cannot accept sin. He's holy. And so we can try as we may, but we cannot be saved. And we have got to, there's God, God knew that. That's why he sent Jesus. So many people are like, well, I can be a good person go to heaven. Then why would Jesus have had to come if we could have been good enough on our own to go to heaven? Why did he have to send Jesus? It was so important that Jesus came. He came because he's God in the flesh. Right. He is the only one that was born without sin. Mm -hmm. He came to this earth. He is God in the flesh. God's son. God, that's amazing that God would leave heaven and that he would humble himself and be born as a baby. For he us. would grow up. He would be able to feel what we feel hurt like we hurt, understand that, and be around all of the sin and all of the things that grieve him so much, but yet he had love. Right. You know, he could have said, oh, you're all sinners, and you're, you know, he wasn't like that. Jesus wasn't angry. He was loving. He mm -hmm. was kind. He came to this earth, and he served others. You know, he did miracles. He healed the sick. He, the Bible says Jesus went about doing good. good. He mm -hmm. did all of that, and he gave them the message that you need to be saved from your sins. You need God. Mm -hmm. You need to repent of your sins. You need to turn from your way to God's way. That's what he kept telling them throughout his 33 years on earth. Mm -hmm. And that's why, even though he never did one wrong thing, he was willing to go to the cross and, and suffer be crucified. The horrors that he suffered, guys, for you mm -hmm. and me, we could never even begin to understand what he right. went through. He did that for me. He did that for you because he knew if I do not shed my blood, the Bible says without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sins. Mm -hmm. That means no, no forgiveness for sins if there was no blood. But the thing is, God required sinless blood. Perfect yeah. blood. Who's the only one that had perfect blood? Jesus. Jesus, I could die for you, wouldn't do any good. You could die for me, wouldn't do any good. But so when true. Jesus died, that was God's blood that was shed that day. He laid down his life. Willingly. Mm -hmm. He could have taken up. Mm -hmm. Angels could have come and taken him, and, and that would have been it. He did not have to do what he did. He did what he did out of love. Like the John 3.16 says, For mm -hmm. God so, so loved, loved the, the world. world. He loved the world so much that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever, okay, put your name in there. Okay, whatever your name is. That if, whosoever, whosoever mm -hmm. believeth in him, should not perish. Okay, that means be, be punished forever, be separated from God, um, but have everlasting life. life. What a wonderful verse that a he wonderful so promise. yeah, so wonderful that he so loved. He didn't just God. So God loved the world. He so loved. When you so love something, that's that's just such a love that Jesus mm -hmm. had, that he would be was willing to die, shed his blood. He paid the price 
that God required. God required a sacrifice. God required blood, and Jesus shed his blood, died for us, so that we would have a pardon for our sins. Jesus took all of our sins upon himself, and he paid for our sins. Mm -hmm. All of our sins have been paid for. In full. Yep. And not only did he die, if he had died, and that's all he did, we would have no hope. Right. None at all, because he'd be like any other man. Okay, he died. But the wonderful thing is, he didn't stay dead. After three days, he rose, he rose again. again. And that's what we just celebrated, Resurrection and Sunday, a few Easter. weeks ago. Mm -hmm. That's exciting. Okay, we serve a risen Savior. He's in the world today. I know that he is living, whatever men may say. We know it because he lives mm -hmm. in our heart. We live and serve a risen Savior. He was seen of above 500 people, the Bible says. So he was seen by many. This was not yeah. done in a corner somewhere. No. This was not done, you know, in, in a place where, oh, only a couple people saw him and he took off and, you know. And of course, the the, Rome, the government wanted to try to, you know, bribe the bribe, guards yeah, and say, oh, it didn't oh, really happen. Anything. Same stuff's happening today, right, mm -hmm. guys? I mean, that's just the way it is. The world's corrupt. It's always been corrupt. Right. Nothing's changed. No. But we have a Savior who is alive mm -hmm. and gives us hope. And it's exciting that we have that. He's, he's an amazing God. So Jesus made that way now. So mm -hmm. we've got a problem, which is our sin. God's got a purpose for us, and he's got eternal life he wants to give to us. And so many people, you know, are well-meaning, and they're like, I want to get to God, I want to get to God, I want to get to God. And again, religion will say, well, you need to go to God, you need to get to God. But mm -hmm. they, if they leave Jesus out, and they just say, well, you've got to be a good person, you've got to pray, and you've got to do all these things, or they try to bring other things in that will distract you from Jesus. Mm -hmm. If you hear more from them about Jehovah, 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 or about some book that they, they teach you about other than the mm -hmm. Bible, well, you've got to follow you know, this book, or you've got to follow that book, or this, this prophetess, or this, this person's teachings. No, no. Only Jesus. Don't let them get you off Jesus, because mm -hmm. he's the most important right. thing. Jesus. He's the way to reach Only God. Jesus. You see in the picture there, he is the bridge that gets way. us. Right. And what, what does it say, right? Mm -hmm. Jesus saith unto them, I am the, the way, the truth, and, and the, the life. life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. But by me. I like it when he says, I am the way. Okay, there's one way. People don't like the that. The way. Right. They think, oh, there's many mm -hmm. ways to heaven. Jesus himself, okay, said, there's one way. Mm -hmm. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No mm -hmm. man cometh unto the Father but by me. And so we know because he said it. We're going to follow mm -hmm. the words of Jesus. Okay, I'm going to follow what the Bible says right. because I know God doesn't lie. No. And he's given us a way to make things right. He's given us a way to reach him. So if you want to find God today, you need Jesus. Right. You need him. And then you go across that bridge mm -hmm. and God promises you. He's got some great things that he's promised. Eternal life. No right. condemnation. It means no, right. you're not going to be separated from him or punished you know, forever in hell. You're going to be passed from death to, to life. life. And it's a wonderful, wonderful thing. And what happens is every one of us has a throne in your heart. Mm -hmm. That throne is like is inside your heart, okay, inside your soul, who you really are. We all have a throne room in our heart. Right. And before we accept Christ as our Savior, and when we're born into this world, guess who we think of all the time? Self, self, me, self. Me, 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 me. Me, <laughs> me, me, me. me. Always, right? right? We're always concerned about mm -hmm. number one. All of us are. We right. all love ourselves. Of Let's course. be honest. And look at the middle the middle letter of sin. See, I made it big like that? Mm -hmm. S-I-N. I, I, me, yep. me, self. When Lucifer, you know, was, was before God and he said, I will be like the most high. I, I, I. I, I, I he was the first, mm -hmm. that was the first, you know, sin. That was it. Lucifer, you know, thought that he could be God. Now he was, now he's Satan. Mm -hmm. Because it was I, 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 I. He put himself on the throne of, of his heart. Mm -hmm. That's a problem. And that's where a lot of people are at. They're saying, well, I believe in Jesus. I believe in God. And yeah, I know I'm a sinner. Yeah, you know those things. You know them mm -hmm. up here. But in order to have a heart change on the inside, something has got to change in your mm -hmm. heart. And that's where people are like, Right. No, that's where the line gets drawn right. between the ones mm -hmm. that are like, okay, I'm going to really believe or not believe. Mm -hmm. Because God has a way, and it's called repentance, mm -hmm. and it's important. Acts 20, 21 talks about repentance towards God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. Right. 
Uh, Romans 10, 17 says, So faith that cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. So we need that faith, and we need that repentance. That re word repent, it means to turn away from. It means to have a change of mind that leads to a change of heart. Right. Now, repentance, again, is not working your way to heaven. It's not saying, well, okay, i got to be good enough now and change all my sins before I come to God. Mm -hmm. No, that's not. You don't have the power to change no. your sin. Right now, before we accept Christ as Savior, we are literally chained to sin. Mm -hmm. We are in bondage. Okay, We are imprisoned by sin. You can't stop sinning if you try. No. You have no power over sin. It's enslaved you. Whether you fully realize that or not, the older you get, the more you will realize, mm -hmm. oh, I thought I had control of this sin. Oh, I, I play with it, and it's fun, and it brings me some pleasure. Then you'll mm -hmm. find out, oh, now it's controlling me. It'll turn around on you like a rattlesnake. It'll bite you. It'll get you. We are enslaved to sin. We can't mm -hmm. get away from it. But when we look and we finally realize, whoa, I'm in trouble. This sin is bad. We realize how bad our sin is, and we realize before God, God is holy and he's perfect, and my sin, it's a crime against God. Mm -hmm. It's like I've come in and I've, I've, I've wronged God. Mm -hmm. I've done something wrong. I'm a, it's a crime against God, and wow, I'm wrong, and God is right, right. and I need a change in my life. Mm -hmm. Okay, till you reach that point where you come to the end of yourself and you say, I am wrong, God is right, you can't be saved. It's just, you can't be saved if you don't think you're in trouble. If mm -hmm. you've got somebody who's out in the middle of the ocean, right, and <laughs> they've got nothing, right, and they're out paddling, and you're like, you know, the helicopter comes over and drops a, you know, a life ring, and ah, uh, and the guy doesn't take it. He's like, mm -hmm. I'm okay, I'm okay. You know, he thinks he's okay, and then he ends up drowning. But, like, people try to reach out and help. God's trying to reach out to you right now right. and says, you need me, you need, you need my help. And you're like, no, I'm good. So many people in life are like, mm -hmm. no, I'm good. You know, you, you tell them, hey, you need to know about Jesus. And, oh, I'm good. I'm good. God says you're not good. You're not okay. you got to realize first that you're lost before you can be saved. Right. And be willing to turn from your sin and say, God, my way is wrong. Your way is right. Mm -hmm. And I want to turn my life over to you. I want to give you my heart, and I want to turn my life over to you. That's where it starts. So we've got a few things about being saved. It's A, B, C. It, it is simple. Mm -hmm. It's not difficult to be saved it's simple to be saved but it's not easy to be saved right. because being saved means surrendering your will and your way and so many that's, people are like and that's what our flesh does not want right. to do it doesn't want nope it wants its way right. and if you keep letting your flesh have its way mm -hmm. and you don't surrender to god you cannot be saved right so a a is admitting Maybe. that you're a sinner and that you cannot save yourself okay you got to admit that and you got to be honest about it right. the bible says you got to be honest so, Romans 3.23 says, For some have sinned and come short of the glory of God. No. No. How many have sinned? All. All. We're all have sinned. <laughs> We're all in the same boat, guys. <laughs> yep. We've all sinned. All of us have sinned. Every one At of us. At one time or another. Yep. Not one of us can say, I'm good enough. I'm perfect. I'm, I'm, I'm no. good enough. Nope. So we've got to admit that. Then, you've got B. B is believe, believe that Jesus died and rose again to pay the penalty for your sin. So you need to believe that. And so that's, sometimes that's where it takes a little while, okay? Mm -hmm. Some people will say, well, I've heard the Bible, I know this, and boom, I'm going to get saved. Sometimes it takes longer than that, this believing part. We were talking last night when we had a Bible study um, here. We were talking about um, trusting God. So I've got a coin here, and this side says trust. Trusting is resting on, just like I'm resting on my, my chair right now. I'm resting mm -hmm. in it. I'm trusting in this chair to hold me up. I'm not worried about it. I didn't think a thing about it when I sat down. I just right. knew in confidence that this chair was going to hold me up. Mm -hmm. Just like you learn to trust in God. And because God's not going to fail you. Like people in your life, people in this world, they're going to fail you because they're sinful. Right. But God's not sinful. He's holy and you can trust him. And then on the other side of the coin is faith. That faith is believing in something you can't see. Believing in a God that you can't see with your eyes. That's the only way to come to God is by faith. You have to be able to believe in what you can't see. The only way to do that is, is trust Him. And how does that faith come, be born in your heart? Romans ten seventeen says, again, so then faith cometh by hearing, and, and hearing by the, by the Word, word of, God. of God. So you need to hear the Word of God. That's mm -hmm. why we're here today. Hopefully this video can get out to a lot of people, 
and that you can hear. A lot of young ladies can hear this message. If yes. you know somebody that needs to know God, mm -hmm. forward it to them. You never know. They may watch it and come to know. So faith cometh by hearing and hearing mm -hmm. by the word of God. And so we need that faith be, to be born in our heart, and that's important. Mm -hmm. Acts 16.31 says, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. Mm -hmm. That's a promise. So if we'll believe, but that belief has to take place in our heart. And sometimes it takes a while of hearing God's word. Get mm -hmm. in a good church. I want to encourage you. You need to be in a good church. If you need a good church to go to, if you need a recommendation, let me know. Uh, we'll wherever get you hooked you up live. wherever you are. We'll look it up in, in the world and we'll try mm -hmm. to find you a, okay, a good place where you can go and get some help. Um, and we want to see you. Get in church. Get around God's word as much right. as you can in God's people. Mm -hmm. you, the more you hear that God's word, shit. yeah, the more it's going to... Iron sharpeneth iron. We need to be around the people of right. God. Very important for that belief to be mm -hmm. born in our hearts. So we need that. Admit that you're a sinner. Believe that Jesus died and rose again to pay the penalty for your sin. And then C is mm -hmm. call upon... Jesus to forgive you mm -hmm. and cleanse your heart from sin and give him control of your heart's throne. Mm -hmm. That's what you need to do. Call on him. Surrender and complete control. That's it. It's surrendering. Yep. Okay, you're not doing anything to earn it. You're just saying, God, I'm I'm wrong and you're right. Mm -hmm. And calling on him, I'm not going to give you some little prayer that you need to pray. Well, here now, everybody, you just pray after me. Pray these prayer, this prayer and you'll be saved. It's no. not the prayer that saves you. Have you. To calling on him. Mm -hmm. Let's look together. Uh, this is a really important verse in R the book of Romans. Romans 10. We're going to look at a few verses here. I'll get Abby to help me out here. Romans 10, and we're going to read Romans 10, 9 and 10. If you could read those for us. Okay. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus Christ, and and shall believe in thine heart that God hath risen, raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth un, unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Right. So confess with thy mouth that the, that the Lord Jesus, and believe in thine heart that, that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. And then, if we look in verse 13, here's the word that where, where call on him comes in. For mm -hmm. whosoever shall call, call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. That's a promise. So for whosoever, again, just like John 3, 16, there's whosoever there, put your name in there. Mm -hmm. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So if you will call on him, you will just talk to him like you talk to your friend. Mm -hmm. Talk to God. God, I know that I'm a sinner. God, I know I can't save myself. I know I'm in trouble with you because I sin and I do wrong. And and I don't want to do wrong. I want to go your way. I don't want to go my own way anymore. I want to go your way. I want you to be in control of my life, God, because I just make a mess of it. And please forgive me of my sin. And I believe you died. I believe you rose again, Lord Jesus. And please come into my heart and life. If you'll ask him to come in, he'll come in. Mm -hmm. And he will be your savior but you know what it is he's not going to force his way into your heart you have to open the door to your heart to him and so many people leave the door of their heart closed mm -hmm. they just close it up and they say nope i'm going to do things my way i'm good i don't need anybody or anything sometimes they've gotten burned in life right mm -hmm. they've got somebody that's hurt them maybe even somebody really close to them that's hurt them or abused them mm -hmm. maybe you've been through that and you're like i don't trust anybody right. you got to remember god's not like those people in your life that you let you down God. right he will never fail you. Mm -hmm. He's never going to leave you. He's never going to forsake you. You can trust him. Open your heart. I just want to encourage you today. To find God, you've got to mm -hmm. open your heart. You've got to be a truth seeker. You've got to admit that you're a sinner. You've got to believe and you've got to call on him. Mm -hmm. And if you'll do that, just do it in your own words. Okay, it doesn't have to be a fancy prayer. Um, just asking him to forgive you of your sin. Right. Giving him your heart in life. And what mm -hmm. he'll do is he'll come in. And your heart is now going to be his throne room. Right. And it's exciting. Because with Jesus, it's all or nothing. Mm -hmm. You're either going to give him all your heart or nothing. God right. doesn't take you in little pieces. Well, God, you can have this area. You can have this. Ne no, God says, I want all or nothing. I don't play, I don't play games. Right. He's not like us. You can't walk the fence. You can't give God half of your heart. Nope. Nope. It's everything. Yep. And... He wants to come in. He wants to change your life. Yes. He will change your life. Mm -hmm. Salvation is real. Sure. Maybe you have seen people that have said, oh, I'm a Christian. Christianity is such a broad term now. Mm -hmm. Where you're, oh, I'm a Christian, but 
I go out and do whatever I want, act whatever way I want, mm -hmm. listen to whatever I want. There's no different. They don't act any differently than anybody else. And you see, wait right. a minute, I didn't think Christians did that. I didn't mm -hmm. think the Bible was for, you know, doing this or that. No, it's not. And when you become a Christian, there's certain things that you're not going to be able to do anymore. You know why? Because the, of the, Lord. Right, <laughs> the Holy Spirit comes li and lives in inside you. you. Your spirit mm -hmm. becomes alive. And God comes and lives on the inside of you. And when that, you're about to do something, the yeah. Spirit just says, oh, don't do that. Right. That God, God can't do that. He, God can't come and live inside of you and there not be a change. Right. So if you pray and you ask the Lord Jesus and you mean it with all your heart, okay, and you've given him all your heart mm -hmm. and you really mean it, there will be a change in you. You will want, you will desire God. You will want to read his word. You will want to be around God's people. Mm -hmm. Okay, you will want to love others. You will want to know more about God. God if, changes if nothing your changes, wanter. right? If nothing <laughs> changes, and you're just like, oh, I can go on and just do whatever I did before. Nothing's really changed. Then you didn't, you didn't get it. Okay, mm -hmm. it's not real. You're gonna know it. The Bible says right. you'll know it because the Spirit Bear beareth witness. witness with our spirit mm -hmm. that we are the children of God. Exactly. You're gonna know it. There's gonna be something different. Like Abby said, it's like your conscience now is kind of on steroids. Yeah. You're going to be like, I can't do that anymore and enjoy it. And you feel mm -hmm. so rotten. The sin you used to be able to do before you got saved and, and not really bother you much, all of a sudden it, it bothers, really you. bothers you. And if it doesn't, mm -hmm. again, you're not saved. Right. So it's different because he becomes the king of your heart. Number one. And he is. He's mm -hmm. number one. And it's awesome. You know, so many people think, oh, Christians can't do this. They can't do that. They can't do this. No, you don't want to anymore. Okay, right. I don't want to go out and party. Mm -hmm. I don't want to, to do all that stuff. I want to serve the Lord. It's right. a blessing. It's not something I have to do. It's something I get to do. It's wonderful. Right. Because Jesus, when he comes, when you get saved, he takes the penalty mm -hmm. of your sin. He took that penalty. So now you don't have to worry about going to hell. You don't have to worry about being punished for all eternity because he's taken your sins upon himself. Right. He's covered it with his, his blood. You've taken the pardon. It's like having that piece of paper when God, you know, God's got a pardon with your name on it. Mm -hmm. And he says, if you'll take this pardon, I'll forgive you of your sins, but you've got to take the pardon. So he hands you the pardon, mm -hmm. and if you take it, you say, yes, God, I know I need it. I Please forgive me. I need to be saved. And you take that pardon, God says, now you don't have to worry mm -hmm. about being punished Pay for your soul. sins. Yep. He paid it. You've just got to accept what right. is already done. Okay, you don't have to work for it. Right. But if you choose and you say, no, I don't want the pardon. No, I don't want that pardon. And she, Abby could refuse it. Just like a gift. If I give you a birthday gift, mm -hmm. you could refuse it. You could say, no, I don't no, want that don't gift. Want that. That's your choice. And mm -hmm. I would have to respect that choice. Right. And that's what God will do. God mm -hmm. will respect your choice. If you say, no, I don't need that pardon. I'm good enough on my own. I I'm okay. You know, I'm good. I'm going to follow my church. I'm going to follow my family. I'm going to follow my culture. You know, or my cultural beliefs, or you know, those kind of things, God's they'll never save you. He's not gonna force you. Nope. He's not gonna force you right. into your heart. Right. But you, so you got the penalty. He'll he'll save you from the penalty of your mm -hmm. sin. Then the next thing he saves you from is the power. power. Now mm -hmm. sin doesn't have power over you anymore. Right. Now you've got power over sin because you you've got God it. living in you, mm -hmm. and He can give you the strength now to overcome the sin in your life. You're on the winning side. Right. It God. doesn't mean you're gonna never sin again. Right. Some people say, "Well, you're a Christian. You should be perfect. Then you shouldn't sin at all." No, you're still going to sin from time to time. You're not going to be sinless, right. but you, you should sin less. Less and less and less. The closer we get to right. the Lord, the more we become like Him. This is a learning thing. You're going yes. to be learning the Bible. No, at this point when you get saved, if you think you have to understand everything about the Bible, everything about God before you accept Him as Savior, you're never going to understand that at all. You can never learn too no. much about the Bible. But as we grow in Him, as we get closer to Him, as you learn more about His Word, mm -hmm. that's what we want to encourage you with with this study, is get your position with, with Jesus Christ settled today. Don't let it go. Today is the day of salvation, the Bible says. You need to get it settled if you don't know. And if we can be a help to you, you know, yes, we want to be. I and would. now the penalty and the power of sin has been taken care of. Mm -hmm. So we're like two-thirds saved. One day... When our body dies, okay, our spirit that's now been made alive can now take our soul, that part of us that doesn't die, to be with God because now our spirit's not dead anymore. Mm -hmm. Then we can be free from the very presence, presence of, sin of sin because heaven has no sin because mm -hmm. God's holy. That's why he won't allow any sinners into heaven because he wants to keep mm -hmm. heaven to be a place that's a wonderful place where there is no, nothing like that, no sickness, no death, no mm -hmm. sorrow. Everybody talks about heaven. 
Mm -hmm. But, you know, heaven isn't going to be heaven. So many people, oh, I'm going to go up to heaven. I'm going to have a party. I'm going to party yeah. and I'm going to drink. Not, yeah, I'm going to go up to heaven and ride my Harley. You know, <laughs> that's not what heaven's no. going to be, guys. Okay? It's going to be If you don't like going to church, <laughs> you're not you, going to like heaven. Okay? If you think, man, mm -hmm. going to church is a drag. Then guess what? Heaven, you don't like be singing miserable. or praying, yeah. praising God. <laughs> You're not gonna like heaven. <laughs> but if you like those things, and you will after mm -hmm. you come to know Jesus Christ, heaven is gonna be wonderful. Yes. Praising and serving God for all eternity. What a Fellow wonderful believers hope. and with Christ. Yeah. We have a wonderful, wonderful. Right. Find you can find joy in your life. Okay. No matter what mm -hmm. your life is like. Okay. Some of you may have a really hard life. Some of you may be facing some things in your life right now where you feel very hopeless or very depressed um, and you don't think that anybody is there or anybody cares. I'm telling you today that Jesus cares. Yes. He wants to help you. He wants to give you joy. Yes. Okay? But joy is only found in Jesus. Right. And we teach um, the kids when we teach them over mm -hmm. the summer, we teach them a little song about joy. And the, the letters stand for J okay. stands for Jesus. Jesus. Put him first. Then the O stands for others. others. Serve others. That's what he wants us to do. Tell mm -hmm. others about Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And then put yourself last. You. You last. Mm -hmm. That's how you spell joy. Jesus, others, and you. Yep. And there's another um, song here that I wanted to teach you a little bit. It's a really good song. Mm -hmm. um, it's just a little chorus that I wanted to sing with you, and I just wanted you to remember it. And that's kind of what we're going to leave you with with the lesson today. Uh, and it goes like this. If you want joy, real joy, wonderful joy, let Jesus come into your heart. If you want joy, real joy, wonderful joy, let Jesus come into your heart. Your sins he'll wash away, your night he'll turn to day, your life he'll make it over anew. If you want joy, real joy, wonderful joy, let Jesus come into your heart and that's our prayer today is that right. you'll let him come into your heart that you'll find him take full possession of your heart yeah let him have all your heart and if we can be an encouragement to you in any way if you have other questions or struggles we're glad we'd be glad to help we'd be glad to point you to a good bible believing church in, in your area we want to see you get plugged in we want to see you encouraged we want to see you having a life that has Jesus in it so you can have that joy and that peace that you know we all so desire in our life yes so thanks for joining us, guys. You can check out other things on our YouTube channel, on Pastor the Pastor Todd YouTube channel. We've got messages and sermons songs by my husband. We've got songs that we sing, hymns, um, even some kids' object lessons You know mm -hmm. that, that we've done. So hopefully it'll be a blessing to you. And we'll be back in the next video with a, another lesson. All right. Okay. God bless you. Bye. Bye-bye.